Okay, it's now recording. Okay. And then just try not to turn that dial or for something. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get started. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of what Sage is and tell you about some of its strengths as far as what areas of mathematics it's best in, and uh, give you an overview of the website. And then after doing that, then um, I'll kind of guide you on a hands-on tour where you can try out Sage and uh, do more with it. So first, Sage is a project that I started in the, near the end of 2004 and made the first release in maybe February of 2005. And it's grown quite a lot over the years since then. Uh, this is the Sage website, which is sagemath.org. Maybe I'll, I encourage you to go to any of the same websites I'm going to if you want. And let me get out a full screen so that you can see everything I do. Just in case you want to. So there's sagemath.org. Uh, this is the main website of Sage, and you can just type Sage into Google usually and get to this website. And um, just to give you a sense of kind of the uh, scope of Sage and the depth, there's something called the Devel Map, which has little um, stars for developers around the world who have contributed code to Sage and um, agreed to let us put them on the map. So there are many more people who have contributed in, in one way or another, but these are the people that we wrote to them and they gave us permission to put their, you know, their address on the map. And there's uh, about 241 listed here. You can zoom in and you see that it's pretty much all over the world. There's kind of a big missing thing in the Middle East and Africa. But everywhere else in the world pretty much has Sage developers. Australia, South Africa is a little bit, um, Central and South America, uh, etc. So there's a lot of people all over the world. Um, the site itself is pretty deep in that, um, you know, there's some links at the top, but if you start clicking around, you'll find there's quite a lot here. Uh, for example, there's TriSage Online. So this takes you to the Sage Notebook, which some of you may have tried yesterday, and which I'll say some more about in a few minutes. Um, this lets you use Sage interactively over the web in your web browser. Uh, also, there's documentation, and there's really a lot here. So there are tutorials and all kinds of things like this. Um, and then other further resources. There's a whole bunch of quick reference cards. If I click there, you'll see them. Um, so there are quick reference cards in different areas of mathematics. There's an overall quick reference card. These quick reference cards, I'll pull one up so you can see what they look like. Um, but there's one in overall Sage, then there's one on linear algebra, one on number theory, one on calculus, and one on very elementary mathematics. So just so you know what they look like, um, they look like this. They're, they're made using LaTeX. So what they have is a lot of examples of little commands and the corresponding mathematics. And it's meant that if you printed it on a double-sided piece of paper, you could fold it up and have a little quick reference card. So each of them is two pages long. We don't have one in graph theory, but if anybody gets really into graph theory in Sage, um, you can make a quick reference card and put it up on this website. And it would be appreciated by many people. OK, so there's lots and lots of documentation here. And moreover, there's more than just the link you get here. So there's also other forms of documentation in the so-called library. So there's um, dozens and dozens of papers that cite Sage that are listed under publications. There are many books that use Sage in some way or are about Sage or something else. Um, and so you can click on those to get information. So publications, this allows you to see mainly research papers that somehow use Sage. So um, that's what's listed here. And it's used, it's not just you know, for pure mathematics or something. So the, it looks like the most recently added one was a paper that appears in astronomy and astrophysics um, this month. So it's probing magnetic helicity with synchrotron radiation and Faraday rotation. Many words I don't know anything about, but, uh, but the one right before that is addition law structures of elliptic curves, which is you know, number theory. So SAGE is a very wide system in that it addresses, it is really definitely of interest to people in the sciences and also to people in mathematics. So you know, 80, paper 88 is about cosmic ray transport. Paper 89 is about the computation of cohomology rings. So, it's really um, striking the way pure and applied mathematics get mixed together in SAGE, in the applications of SAGE. There are also many PhD and I think probably master's theses that are listed that have um, substantial reliance on SAGE. And then there are books that are listed down here, as you can see. Okay, so um, that kind of gives you a bit of an overview. 
There's other important um, tools for getting support related to Sage. So let me tell you about a few of those. So there's a bunch of mailing lists. The main one of interest to you is probably Sage Support. This is just a standard um, mailing list that you can subscribe to uh, by going here to Sage Support. If you click there, then you can subscribe. And you can see all the discussions. Um, you can learn more about the group. You can search the group and see if a question that you have has come up before. You can see that there are many people that have subscribed to the group. Over 2,000 have subscribed to the group. So there's a lot of members, um, etc. So the mailing lists are one source of support if you like mailing lists. Another source of support is something called ask.sagemath.org. This is kind of like Stack Overflow if you kind of come from a computer background, or Math Overflow if you've asked research math questions. By the way, if you don't know about those sites, there are both um, sites you should learn about, especially here. So by the way, there's something called Math Overflow. This is a question and answer site that is completely devoted to serious research mathematics. If you post a question like, how do you solve this, how do you, how do you compute this interval that came up in my calculus class on the exam, then they'll just delete it or close it instantly. Look at the but top post, link, positivity of second. <laughs> is that related to your class yes. or to the RE? So yes. let's click on it. Um, it's, this is the, I guess, the top. It's been, put, been discussed for quite a while, but um, all the questions that are here are serious research math questions. Um, you can typeset <laughs> using mathematical markup using LaTeX. And then what people will do is try to answer the questions, and the questions will get rated either up or down um, by various people. So like, if you think, oh, this looks like a great answer, then you can click um, and rate it, but you have to log in to do so. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about that. You can go right back here. I don't have anything directly to do with Math Overflow, but it's a useful resource to know about. <coughs> it's or it was organized initially, and I think still by a bunch of grad students at Berkeley. But that could be a useful resource for you this summer. So for Sage, there's a similar site. Um, one of the differences is my site that I set up is um, open source in that it runs. I, I run this site off of my own computer using an open source web framework. Um, whereas Math Over or yeah, Math Overflow and Stack Overflow are commercial. But um, what happens is people ask specific questions related to Sage. For example, how can I clear an assignment to a variable? And then um, there's the question, and then there'll be people that try to answer it. And it looks like a good answer to me, so maybe I'll mark it up. Oh, I have to log in. Um, you can log in using OpenID, so you can, if you have a Google account, you can just click on Google, and then you're logged in. You might have to set up a profile. Um, then you can rate questions up or down. You can ask a question, and you just type your question in right here, et cetera, et cetera. And there are um, 573 questions. I set this site up a few months ago, and there are hundreds and hundreds of people. So you can see there are over 15 pages of people with this many people per page who have answered questions. And they get, when you rate one of their answers up, then, they're, then they kind of go up in, in the list and they go down if they go down. So if you like answering questions, you get karma points for doing so. Uh, these two people are Mike Hansen and Carl Dieter, because we're going to be battling for the top <laughs> karma. Uh, I'm amazed to see Mike is not ahead. Um, but if you click on a person, you can see their I think their karma over time. There's like a plot that it draws. <laughs> so you can see how active they were, when they were active, what questions they asked, how many points they got, etc. So there's a strong motivation for people to answer your questions if you have questions about Siege. So that's the Ask site. Um, there's also, let's see, just going all the way back, Siege website, there is an IRC channel. This is like a live chat room where you can ask questions about Siege. And, um, you can use some you know, special IRC client, or you can just use your web browser. There's an IRC client. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> we can figure out what that says. <laughs> N-D-I-N-I-O? O-U. Is it O-U or C-U? C-U. Is it C-U? Okay, really doesn't matter. Really? Doesn't matter? Well, one of the words doesn't matter. Oh, OK. It's, it's a program where they can figure out uh, what, what the text actually is. One of them doesn't matter. Jeez, I just do one of them. But anyways. Um, <laughs> You can see there are currently a whole bunch of people logged into this chat room, including me just now. And you can ask questions like, um, what is Sage? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe people will answer your questions. So. But I mean, you can also ask more serious questions like, you know, how do you do something? 
And you'll see there's lots and lots of discussion that goes on here. Uh, a lot of the questions are very newbie-ish. And you just make up an ID so you don't have to worry about being embarrassed. So that's one way to get help. Um, let me just leave that open to see if anybody answers. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to the Sage website, uh, here again, so more help. Um, let's see, there's lots of videos that I've recorded and other people have posted about Sage that you can watch, like an introductory video and how to do graph theory in Sage and so on. I made some videos where it has slides and then um, has a little picture of me in the corner talking. So those are useful. If you want to add code to Sage, etc. So there's lots of stuff like that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, and there's reported bug. So um, there's a lot of discussion about reporting a bug. But one thing you can do is just click this button and you get a little, um, just to get a little Google form because it didn't load. And here you can just fill out a little form and report a bug. So if you want to complain about Sage, you can do it via that link. And this is also a report a bug in the notebook. So if you have the notebook up, you just click the report a bug button there and it gives you this form. And one nice thing about this is it, it's completely anonymous if you want it to be. So if you just want to like, fire off a bug report because you're annoyed but you're a very shy person, you think you might be wrong, whatever, you can just fire it off this way. And then it gets, and it'll get put in a spreadsheet that somebody looks through and sees whether they actually make sense. And if they do, then they'll get added to the official bug tracker. Um, but there are some people around here that know a lot about Sage and Sage development. So if you run into bugs, you can also talk to them. For example, me. Um, also, Andrew Ohana in the orange shirt in the back with thick uh, black rimmed glasses knows a lot about Sage development. He's been doing Sage development pretty seriously for over two years. So um, he's pretty, he's quite familiar with the whole development process. And um, dozens of undergraduates have contributed code to Sage, maybe a hundred. So a very large amount of the code in Sage was written by undergrads, bug fixes, all kinds of stuff. So don't think that you can't contribute. It's, it's different than, say, Mathematica or Maple in that the probability that one of you could contribute something to Sage um, is very high, whereas the probability you contribute something to Maple or Mathematica personally probably somewhat low, at least this summer. So, so there is that difference. Um, so you can change Sage if you're annoyed by it. <laughs> Confused as usual. <laughs> so, all right, so um, let's see, back to the Sage website. So what else do I have to tell you about? Um, all right, so that's kind of an overview of the website. You know, there's other things to click on. There's really quite a lot. There's a press kit. There's, you know, the, there's the source code of Sage. If you click on open source, you can browse through the source code of Sage if you want. Um, by the way, Sage is completely open source. You can absolutely anything that Sage does, the source code is there. You can get it, you can change it, you can recompile it, do whatever you want with it. It's completely free. Um, you can modify anything. The license, oh, the overall license is GPL. Some components have less restrictive licenses, um, but nothing has a more restrictive license than Sage. And Sage itself is um, it's a complete distribution of software. It combines together nearly 100 different packages with um, several hundred thousand lines of new code that's written in Python and Cython and C++ that we've written. So these are a list of the packages that are included in Sage. Um, so there are many uh, free open source math software systems amongst this list, such as GAP, Perry, Singular, Maxima, etc., that you might have heard of already or possibly used in some special project or something. So that's what Sage is built out of. It's not just a completely brand new system. Okay, so those are the components of Sage. Um, Sage itself, when you start using it, which you'll do in a couple of minutes, the main language that you type in code is Python. So it says Python based. Has anyone here ever written any Python code in their life? Cool, Many, most people, half the room. And in what context? Are you using Sage or just um, using Python because it's fun or in a class or something? One person has a class. They are. So sometimes you learn Python in a class just because Python's really nice. Um, some universities, like MIT, use it for their intro computer science courses. Uh, I think Harvey Mudd does now as well. So it's a pretty popular language. It's really nice and friendly. I hope you agree. Yeah, see. So um, it's not bad. It's nice because with Sage, instead of using you know, some custom math language that I made, that I just sort of pulled out of my um, mind, um, use Python, which is a really standard language. It's uh, maybe one of the top five or 10 most popular languages out there for programming. And it just happens that we use Python instead of our own made up language. So what Sage is, is it's you know, Python interpreter with lots and lots of um, extra functions that are useful for mathematics, basically. 
Um, there's also a compiler. So given that you're you know, spending a lot of focused time and energy over two months, you may want to write some code that's very, very fast that you have to write from scratch. And Python, um, Python is an interpreted language, so it can be pretty slow if you're doing certain types of things. It depends on what you're doing, but some things are slow. And with um, Sage, we also use often a compiler called Cython, which is easy to use from within Sage, if you know it. Um, there's a website, cython.org, about Cython. Um, but what Cython allows you to do is write code that looks almost like Python, except you can declare the types of variables to be any C data type. And you can pretty much map any code you would write in C to corresponding code in Cython. You kind of delete all those semicolons and braces, and your C code turns into Cython code. That said, it, it does take, there is some learning curve, and if you've never used C or Java at all, then you probably find Cython pretty um, difficult to pick up immediately or quickly. Um, Andrew does Cython extremely well, in my opinion. Maybe not his opinion, but he, he's written a lot of Cython code that's very fast, so you can ask him about Cython. So this is important if, for example, you, you, know, you wanted to write some code in the midst of a Sage program, and you knew you could write it really quickly in, say, the C programming language, or maybe in Java, then um, Cython would allow you to write the code just as quickly. This is sometimes very important. Okay, so that's um, the background about Sage. The main areas of mathematics that Sage is good at, in my opinion, are the following three. So, I think Sage is best at number three because uh, many of the Sage developers, including me, are number theorists. So it has a huge amount of number theory functionality. It's also very good at graph theory. There is a really enormous amount of graph theory and some really non-trivial algorithms, such as computing canonical labelings, automorphism groups, isomorphism testing. Um, there are large families of different graphs that are built into Sage that were added by Emily Kirkman, who was an undergrad here a couple of years ago. You get those by typing graphs dot the tab key, and you'll see all these families. So it's very, very nice for graph theory. You can draw lots of pictures of graphs. And she so was on. in this RU program. Yeah, she was in the RU, and she did this as part of the RU. And it's also pretty good for numerical analysis type stuff, kind of MATLAB-like stuff. And that's because um, we include two packages, SciPy and NumPy, which are developed by um, a large community of scientific computing people, independently of Sage. And they've gotten extremely good over the years. Uh, they've been working on these packages long since long before Sage started, and they're, they're quite good, and they're both in Sage. So you can type import SciPy or import NumPy and use the capabilities of those systems. Um, if you just look at the Sage documentation, alone without looking any further, then you might not, you might barely notice that these exist, even though they give you a huge amount of powerful capabilities. Um, you may have to go to their websites and look at their documentation, but all these <coughs> libraries are available. They're in Sage, you just have to import them and then use them. So um, these are probably the three top areas for Sage. There's also symbolic calculus and uh, that sort of thing, like you can compute symbolic integrals, but that's not the forte of Sage, I would say, or these three things. But I think these are also the three most important things for this RU, so. so that's good. Okay, so um, the last thing is I just want you to get started with actually trying to use Sage. Uh, I'm going to give you kind of a quick walkthrough so that you can do the most basic thing, which many of you may have already done, and then I'll just walk around and kind of help you for a few minutes while you try out things, etc. So let me just kind of give you a step-by-step -step tutorial of how you would get going with Sage. One thing is Sage tends to work best in Firefox, but we do support Internet Explorer and Chrome and Safari. But you'll find on these lab computers that you have Firefox in addition to Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is kind of in your face right up here, but if you just go down a little, you'll find Firefox as well, somewhere under Mozilla, uh, way down there, Mozilla Firefox. So if you click there, you'll find, and then don't accidentally click on safe mode. I don't, they don't make it easy, but it's there. And, <laughs> I think it, it'll, Sage will work a little, probably a little better in Firefox. There's probably some, some issues with Internet Explorer still. Um, so what you do is you can click Try Sage Online, or you can just go to sagemd.org. Uh, there are a couple of other servers, in case this one seems really loaded to you. Um, one other one that might make sense to use, since you're at UW right now, is uw.sagemd.org. Um, this server is completely separate from just 
sagemd.org. So if you make worksheets in one, they won't automatically appear in the other. You have a completely separate account. But you can always download and upload worksheets and so on. So if you go to this website, sagemd.org, you can either sign up for a new notebook account and you just make up a username and password and then you log in using it. Or alternatively, you can use OpenID, Yahoo, Google, or any of these other things to log in to the notebook. So um, for example, I have logged into Google a few minutes ago so I can just click the Google button and um, uh, permit this. And now, huh? Why is it asking me that? I already have a profile. Mm. William Stein too. Nice fresh worksheet like you'll get. Okay, so this is what you see when you log in for the first time. Okay. Um, so this is what you see. So again, you can either create a new account or use OpenID. If you create a new account, that might be nice because then you can have multiple accounts if you want. Okay, once you log in, uh, do the following. Click on New Worksheet in the upper left. This allows you to create a new worksheet. And then um, the default title for your worksheet is untitled. And that could get confusing, so you may want to change it to something else. Uh, I'm going to change mine to Tutorial and hit Rename. If you want to change the title anytime after, you just click on that link and you can change it however you want. <coughs> Okay, and now um, let's try something. Once you get your worksheet, let's try to compute 2 plus 2. So what you do is you just type 2 plus 2, and you can either click the evaluate button or you can press shift enter. And um, just so, so it says shift enter. It's like in Mathematica, to evaluate, you press shift enter. If you just press enter, then it goes to a new line, but it doesn't evaluate it. So like if you do 2, you do A equals 2, B equals 3, A plus B, you hit shift enter the last time. OK, so that's, that's most everything you need to know to get going. Um, raise your hand if you're flailing miserably at this point. Raise your hand if Sage is failing miserably, even though you did exactly the right thing. Wow. So you didn't have Sage like not give you the answer, not make a worksheet. Proud of success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty good though. It's a room full of people. We just rewrote the a bunch of stuff in the notebook server so that it would handle more people at once. Seems to have succeeded. Um, okay, so. One other really nice thing you can do is if you put your mouse, so you have a, and you should try this right now, so you have that little blue line. If you hold the shift key down and then click, so shift click, you'll get a text editor where you can um, type stuff like this is, and you can change the fonts if you want, really uh, cool. And you can do things like consider x2, you know, x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. And you can put it in dollar signs and it'll get typeset as mathematics when you save it. Okay, so again, you shift click. Shift click the blue line. Um, so let me just emphasize this. One, get here by shift clicking the blue line. Get back by double clicking. So this allows you to annotate what you're doing um, nicely, which is useful to try to remember what you did. And you can embed images. In fact, the editor you get when you do this is an HTML editor. So if you click on the HTML button, um, a window should pop up which will show you pure HTML. And you can paste pretty much arbitrary HTML in there. So if you know HTML or use something else to construct HTML, you can use this. And um, All right, so those are the main things. Um, I mean, there's help up here in the upper right. There's a page that nobody ever reads, but maybe you will because I'm telling you to, which basically tells you most everything about using the Sage Notebook. So it's called How to Use the Sage Notebook. And it has a list of tricks, um, such as how you insert a new cell, tab completion, how to evaluate input, shift enter. There's also some other things like 
Alt enter does something, control enter does something. If you want to find out what those things do, read this page, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if, you want to, if you have two cells that are next to each other and you want to join them together, so maybe um, you have something like this, but you really wish it was all in one cell, there's a way to do that. Read the page and you'll see what it was. So, <laughs> so you can join, or what if you have, you have your cursor and you want to split two cells, like, whoa, no. that's bad. Oh, maybe you put it, oh no. Hey, we broke splitting cells. Rado. <laughs> you check it out, B equals three, control semicolon. Huh, how it works. All right, danger. Um, so as you can see, sometimes you might accidentally lose something because something goes horribly wrong. There is a way out of that. If you accidentally lose something that you typed in recently, you can click the log button. This records the last 500 things that you had entered, that you had evaluated. Since, I, since this is new, I only have three things. But the log button can save, your, save you in case something goes horribly wrong. So just remember that. This log is kind of like a history. It's the last 500 things you entered into any worksheet. So you know, if you remember, oh, a while ago, I had this perfect input cell that did what I wanted, and I completely lost it. Uh, click on log and look, and you'll, you'll find it with a date stamp right there and everything. So this can come in handy in case you mess up. Oh, apparently it's not 500, it's 100 right now. So. But it's some number of um, inputs. Uh, yeah, there's the help, as I mentioned. There's a tutorial and various other things. Um, if you click on fast static versions, there's even more documentation that's not listed above. So there's stuff about number theory and installing Sage. And of course, if you have your own computer, you can download Sage and install it on your computer. Um, there's thematic tutorials about various topics like group theory and Lie algebras. This Lie methods thing, for example, is pretty amazing if you're into representation theory. Um, it's written by Dan Bunk at Stanford. And it has tons of stuff about Lie algebras and all that sort of thing. I don't know if that has anything to do with the REU. Okay, so, um, and there's the tutorial right here. Basically, this is something that you can read through in about three hours and try lots of examples. This is probably the most efficient way, if you know something about mathematics, to kind of get your head around Sage. If you want to just allocate three hours and three hours later to kind of know something about Sage, this is the thing to read through. That's the tutorial. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you two or three examples. <laughs> and then to whet your appetite, and then I'll just walk around and answer questions. So one, um, I'm gonna plot a function. The function will be sine of x squared times cosine of, I don't know, x plus two. And I'll do it x going from zero to five. So there you are, a nice plot. And you'll, you might notice this looks a lot like what you would type into Mathematica if instead of square brackets and braces, you just had parentheses, like in math. And uh, all the uppercase functions are lowercase with underscores. Otherwise, it's a lot like Mathematica, at least for plotting. So you can draw plots. There's also, um, I won't show you this, but there's also a way of drawing plots that's very, very similar to MATLAB for 2D plots that um, Sage fully supports as well. Um, another example about cube 3D. Oops, there's a such thing. Maybe cube. Cubes are automatically 3D. So by typing that, it should display a 3D cube that I can rotate around. See? Um, and in fact, you can draw general functions in 3D. Um, there's a plot 3D function, a parametric plot 3D function, and an implicit <coughs> plot 3D function, which is pretty impressive. So given a, a function, you can plot the zeros of it in three-dimensional space. Um, let's see, there's also contour plots in 2D. There are, there's a lot of stuff you can pretty much, lots and lots of visualization. So that should whet your appetite a little bit. Okay, and another thing is when you look at the documentation, like if you go to the reference manual, for example, and try to find 3D graphics, maybe plotting 3D fields, <coughs> there, but there'll be examples. And the amazing thing is the examples actually work um, if you go to live documentation, you can just evaluate them there, or you can also cut and paste the entire example into a Sage worksheet, and it should work. We test that the examples run and don't give any errors, uh, they give the right output. So for example, for this one, um, let me paste it over here so I can experiment with it, but it does something involving plotting vector fields. And there it is. So we have vector fields here. Um, turn on spinning. 
second one. So the examples, so a really good way of getting going if you don't know programming at all, you don't know Python at all, is try to search around in the documentation to find something like what you might want to do and just copy and paste and change numbers. Okay, so that concludes the kind of tutorial overview talk. And the only thing I've left to do is just kind of wander around. And I encourage Rado and Andrew to wander around as well. They both know Sage extremely well. And um, you can just ask random questions or try to mess up right when we're walking by so we'll stop and help you or whatever. Okay, thanks. Perfect.